Thank you, and thank you for inviting me to come here today. And just to let you know, I'm not a cybersecurity guy. That's not my top skill. My top skill is to work with stakeholder management. And I'm going to tell you something about what we have created in Aarhus, Denmark, and also about our new common uh, initiative, uh, the Nordic Baltic Think Tank. First of all, um, the security tech space. That's a company just founded in Aarhus uh, with uh, uh, the purpose of making a center of excellence focus on research, innovation, and industry development. Um, we are not doing it for the forces and for the army of Denmark. We are, our focus is the SMEs and to make it more business oriented. We, are, of course, we have looked a bit into Israel, which have done it quite good towards uh, making new companies and also making cybersecurity to a business. And that's the purpose for us. We have uh, put it into the IT city of uh, Katrinibia, which is a part of the city of Aarhus, which uh, I don't know, do any of you know Aarhus? Yeah, second largest city of Denmark, European capital of culture 2017. Uh, but also known for its university, and I will come back to the university later on. We are working on two tracks. Uh, track one is a research and development track, and then we have this uh, business uh, track where we are going to uh, put the SMEs particularly in focus. Um, yeah, and why the cyber and information security, and why is Aarhus taking a responsible uh, for Denmark towards this? We all know the increase of threat levels, um, but we also uh, need the enhancing of cybersecurity, especially in the SMEs. Um, we saw some numbers uh, from you uh, towards the companies. Uh, I guess it was from US, but I can tell you it's exactly the same in Denmark. One of the problems towards the SMEs is that they are not telling anybody about the problem. Uh, last. Friday, no, two weeks ago, the largest uh, uh, estate uh, company in Denmark was hacked, uh, uh, ransomware, uh, 14 days after they told uh, uh, the, the people of Denmark knew it. I can tell you, I was one of them who have a flat uh, uh, who was uh, for sale. And uh, some, one day, last two weeks ago, I couldn't find my uh, house on the, uh, on, on the web page, and it was because they were hacked. 14, 14 days later, they told me that they have all my data, including my bank accounts and my uh, personal identity number. 14 days. And that's how it is in Denmark. I don't know how it is in uh, the rest of the world, but I heard someday that there was a country telling me 212 days. 212 days before they tell their customers that they were hacked. We need to do something about that. And that's one of the things that we're going to work on. But there's also a major business potential in this strong IT and tech industry. Uh, I won't go into to show you some of the companies later who is behind this. And uh, then you also understand that we are, because we are talking about billions and not millions. In, in, in this type of business, if you can do your, if you are, you can say, if you really are professional and you have a, a special skills towards this. Um, and then the, the last part we did in Aarhus was that we had Deloitte uh, to make a, you can say, a big analyze. Is, is it a good idea for Aarhus to try to take um, responsibility uh, for Denmark and uh, also for EU uh, towards uh, trying to make an epicenter of uh, cybersecurity. And uh, the analysis showed, yeah, you have one of the best universities in the world towards uh, uh, cryptographic, you have a lot of companies, uh, so the whole ecosystem around this was there. So um, what happened was that uh, our local DTS Institute, Alexander Institute, the university, our incubation, which is the startup environment of Aarhus and, and the city of Aarhus, decided, OK, we're going to start this company now. Uh, so they put in a lot of money uh, for, uh, for the first year, 1 million uh, euro. 
uh, to start it up and start and try to start the, the to develop different angles towards this. Uh, behind the, the these four uh, founders, there was a lot of companies said, "Okay, we would like to be a part of it." So we created a consortium behind. And just to, you, I, I guess you know some of the names there, Cisco, Microsoft, which is US-based companies, uh, but also startups as this number two chain analysis. I don't know about you know it. They have just had the valuation of the New York Stock Exchange. It's a 10-year-old company, spin out of the Aarhus University with a $8 billion valuation. They can track crypto uh, crypto currency so uh, next time there is a dane or somebody around the world who has been uh, hacked and they are going to pay in the crypto then they can track it and they can track it from uh, the trans uh, where they had done the transfer and they can track it to the house number who is, who are their customers fbi cia central intelligence all over the world are their customers then you can earn money. Uh, so that's what you can do when you have super skills. And that's also a part of this. How do we get more people with super skills? Not only skills, but also super skills. Uh, I can also tell you, uh, if you look down at the, uh, in the last row where we have Vestas, do we all know Vestas, the largest windmill producer in the world? They're also a part of this. Why are they there? Because Vesta's uh, headquarters is in Aarhus. They have 100 uh, people sitting in their cybersecurity department. All over the world, they have 900. They need people with cyber skills. That's why they're also a part of this. Um, so that was uh, so that was so the the members and, and how we had created the cyber uh, security tech space. And uh, what we try to reach is that we're going to have this research area where we are going to focus on not on everything towards uh, cybersecurity, but we have decided eight main topics. And that's the topics where if you are doing your scientific work into uh, defense, then also you can do the same scientific work how to uh, help the SMEs. And, and that's why we have done it. So, and, and, and you know, you can have perhaps 50 or, or 60 different uh, scientific uh, areas where you can work on, but not all of them can help the SMEs. We are only focusing on the ones which can help the SMEs. Um, and um, so we have eight different areas. On that, we have um, towards the, then we can look down to the skills, uh, the cyber skills. Uh, where we are working with, uh, where we have two areas right now we're working on. The one is the, yeah, towards talent development activities, the ones we're doing in the Nordic, the uh, Baltic Think Tank, which I'm going to speak about uh, around later on. And then just uh, also how we can support the national team, how we can, uh, uh, the guys not coming into the cyber, uh, cyber, national team, uh, you know, in, in Denmark, I, I guess we have approximately 1,000 youngsters who is uh, applying to get on the national team. Only 15 of them is elected. What about the 985 others? Are they just going out to be school teachers? No, we, we need to, to, ha to have them to focus also in the future, even though they're not the best, then we can, uh, th then they are still uh, competent and they still have skills that we need to them to choose the, uh, the right way towards the future. And towards the SMEs, we are, we, we are working with three different parts. Uh, we are going to create a security test lab where the uh, SMEs and the startup and the scale-ups can come in and test their products in a live environment. Uh, we would like to build up and cert uh, where uh, for, for the SMEs, you know, at 24 7. But, uh, and, and when I'm speaking about the SMEs here, it, it can perhaps be the carpenter, it can be small companies, but they can also be hacked. But if they're hacked, they are, they, they are game over. So we need a place where they can call 24 hours, 7, 365 days uh, around the world, where they can get support. We can. Um, uh, get, uh, get support, but also can uh, we can have technicians going out to help them. If, if we're not doing that, um, then we have a lot of problems. And we can see that they are not protected at all. 
the small SMEs, they don't have any protections. So we need also to get them protected. Uh, and uh, what we're working right now is to have, uh, to have the Danish government to understand that they also need to protect the companies. It's not, uh, it's not enough that they invest a lot of into the, to the military and the cyber defense there. They also have an, an obligation to uh, be sure that also the private companies are going to be uh, safe and secure over the futures, while that's where the taxpayers are. Uh, so that's a part of it. And then the last part is the inter entrepreneurship lab. Um, yeah, that was the eight uh, areas. And, and just to let you know, uh, as an example, if you look into cryptographic, then of course you can focus on that towards the SMEs, but you can also do it towards the, uh, the defense. It's the same technology. It's uh, the scientific guys at the university tell me that approximately 80% of their of the work is exactly the same. So they only have to change 20% to make sure that we also can have a excellent uh, scientific work towards the SMEs in the future. And uh, just letting you know about the University of Aarhus, if you look into the CSR rankings, there's, there are approximately number 13 in the world, 15 in Europe. Uh, if you look into the areas towards cryptographic, and uh, then Aarhus University is second best in the world. And that's why a lot of experts choose to uh, travel to Aarhus. I, I guess uh, uh, the employees at this department, I guess 25 persons of them is Danes. The rest come from all over the world, uh, Western world, I would say. It's quite difficult to get a job there if you come from China or Russia right now. Uh, because it's also uh, they're also going to develop uh, some products for the Danish government, and then the Nordic Baltic things end. First of all, we have um, uh, the idea behind this is that in all the Nordic Baltic countries, we are quite good at this area, but we need to find a way where we can make knowledge sharing, uh, where we are not. Uh, standing in, you can say, in silos beside each other, but where we are breaking down the silos. And that's the idea behind it. And uh, that's also why Aarhus have taken the, the, the lead on this one uh, with the uh, big support from the, from the, here from uh, Estonia and from the uh, Nordic, um, uh, what do you say? In the, in the, it's because we have a, another Danish word. Nordic Council of Ministers. Uh, ministers in Denmark we say Nordic Ministerrådet. Uh, so I I, uh, I know the Danish word, um, but there is a in, we all know there is this in educate education and training. There is shortage of this. It's a common problem we have uh, in all the Nordic countries. Um, we can also see the legal mandates increasing. Uh, that could be. Uh, then there's two, as I mentioned here, but we have seen the list from the EU, which is uh, towards 2028, there will be approximately two, uh, 20 new areas, just like NIS2, who is attacking us, or, what we, or, or whatever we should call it. But uh, in, in Denmark, there's a big at, at attacker, the NIS2, while uh, a lot of the Danish companies is not prepared to be a part of the NIS2. And in Denmark, we're also discussing, should the municipalities be a part of NIS2, yes or no? Uh, for me, I mean, municipalities is critical infrastructure, so of course they should be. But uh, the EU say perhaps. So, uh, and you all know that these two should work from 11 months from now. Uh, there is a high turnover rate in the cybersecurity sector. We need to bring it down. Uh, we had to have common ideas how to work with it. Uh, the landscape is, yeah, is uh, evolving, and uh, we also could see that it demands new type of skills. Are we, uh, now we heard uh, about the Swedish uh, model of the, what they're doing now. Perhaps they are creating something new that we could use uh, uh, all over the Nordic Baltic countries. And uh, so I think it's going to be quite good that we are establishing this uh, thing tank. And then the biggest problem, yeah, the lack of uh, 
cybersecurity uh, guys right now, and also for the future. Uh, we could see uh, all the, if you look it at, at Aarhus, uh, we, we have this uh, department as I show you, but we also have uh, where the doctors are uh, educated and also where the, a lot of the people working for the government uh, is, uh, is educated there. And uh, I tell you, it's not sexy enough to work with uh, or, or study cybersecurity right now in Denmark. They are still choosing what they chose 10 years ago and what mom and dad told them 20 years ago. And that's one of the problems. So I hope we can help each other how to uh, uh, identify and discussing the most uh, pressing challenges that that we have in common here in the Nordic Baltic uh, region, um, have, that we together can find and identify uh, common challenges as we can work on together. Um, and um, also for the future, uh, making common um, uh, task, working task for us across uh, the, the Nordic Baltic countries. I think we have experts in Aarhus, but also in Copenhagen. And I, I knew there is experts here in, in Tallinn and, and here in, in Tartu. Let's, let's get together and try to make some of the, um, uh, make, uh, solve some of the problems while uh, working in, in these task force groups. Um, and then, of course, uh, just be collaborate ab about this. What we're going to do is we have a plan for the next year in this program, uh, seven activities right now. That's going to, uh, I show you the, the web page later. There's going to be a digital platform to share knowledge and resources for all of us uh, where we can put in uh, our best and new idea. Uh, we're going to do the online task force groups, which I mentioned before, online seminars, we're going to do a physical conference in June 24 in, in Aarhus. And at the next year's uh, cybercation here in uh, Tartu, we are also going to do an event. And uh, we're going to, uh, afterwards, we have been working with it together. We're going to do a best practice publication. And of course, the annual paper where we will uh, summarize and uh, the outcome and the recommendations for all of us and for all of you. Um, the impact. I would, I would just end with that. Uh, yeah, we, we should have this collaborate network where we, across the Nordic and the Baltic uh, uh, countries, is gathering together all the practitioners so they can share the best practice and create a training, um, uh, common training materials and development of this digital platform. We have done the web page. But our dream is that we have this digital uh, common training platform across the Nordic Baltic countries over time. And uh, of course, strengthen the cyber defense and the competences towards this in the Nordic Baltic countries. Uh, I'll just show you this one while uh, the idea started in Denmark among three partners. That was the city of Aarhus, us in security tech space, and then uh, Happy 42. Happy 42 is going to be the lead. Some of you have perhaps met uh, Linda, uh, which is the project manager of this uh, uh, Nordic Baltic uh, think tank, and uh, she is going to, to be the one who is reaching out for you and uh, where, which you can contact if you want to be a part of it. Uh, Linda has been also been uh, behind the Danish uh, national team of cyber skills and have done a lot of the cyber skills project we have in Denmark today. She has been heading a lot of them. So he's, uh, she's going to take good care of this uh, project uh, together with all of us. And I hope you will enjoy the and uh, join the project. First of all, you can go into this web page, web page the cyberbridgeforum and uh, dot com, where you can read about the Nordic Baltic Cyber Skills Think Tank. Uh, and also there, you can reach out to Linda if you want to be a part of it. And some of you, we will all also reach out to, so you can, uh, so we can be sure that we are uh, gathering uh, the best competence to, uh, all around the Nordic Baltic uh, countries. I guess that was it. Thank you, Pierre, as well. Um, speaking of the challenges, uh, or if I could put it that way, um, what do you actually see as the biggest challenge for a think tank to you be successful in that terms? Will we be ready to share knowledge? 
yeah. I guess that will uh, be the biggest challenge. Uh, how do we uh, have the trust to each other to mm-hmm. um, um, to be together and say, okay, we have perhaps some strengths here, mm-hmm. but also we have some weakness, and uh, and to go into a room and and talk about this, mm-hmm. and but also that. Uh, i told you about the Aarhus University. They are good. I also we also know there is a lot of good universities. So it's not going to be a university competition. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a, a a place where all the universities and uh, also the uh, the private scientists around this and uh, and and the governments are, have a trustfully environment mm-hmm. where they can come in and do the knowledge sharing about what mm-hmm. they can. Of course, there are some areas where you not can do the knowledge mm-hmm. sharing, but. Uh, but to to have the trust to each other, I was I would really hope that that it's going to be the the uh, also the big impact afterwards of this. Mm-hmm. I was a little surprised when you said that going to study cyber or work in cyber is not a very sexy thing in Denmark. I would have guessed the other way around. Why do you think this is that way? Because I feel like here at least it's becoming more that if you say that you work in cyber, that's actually pretty cool. Even as 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 a female working in in cyber, and 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 it's more that everybody understands that it's like it's a part of our life that like you just kind of deal with this anyway every day. What do you think? It's still like, is it is it behind some kind of mindset? Hasn't like do we need to do more for I don't know campaigns or or what could be the very best also you know the way to attract people to to continue their either studies or we can talk about the key years here. We miss women. We miss uh, women. <laughs> yeah, uh, because if you come and uh, look into this area in Denmark, and if you're going to uh, to uh, to to study cybersecurity, mm-hmm. then a lot of the students are guys. Mm-hmm. That's one of the challenges. The next is that is quite nerdy. It is quite nerdy, <laughs> uh, if, uh, and uh, and it's still my and and mom and dad don't understand what cybersecurity is. And in Denmark, it's still mom and dad who is going to <laughs> tell the the kids what which education are they going to have, and that's a big problem. While it is so important that they choose this, and then um, we had also heard that there is some of the uh, guys coming into the to the university saying, "Oh, they they will not take this direction while mm-hmm. it has something to do with war." Mm-hmm. So they would like to de- uh, so they would like to develop mm. the next uh, as uh, something uh, towards perhaps the medical industry or something. Mm. Uh, so 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 that's also a problem that uh, if we don't have a, you know Denmark has we don't have had that uh, we haven't uh, you know our borders is quite secure while we have mm. a lot of others uh, around us to protect us mm-hmm. and uh, so it's not that necessary in Denmark to have that mindset as uh, and it has not been that necessary to have the mindset because because i feel like uh maybe one of the solutions here could be actually having role models there i mean if we if even just kind of like look around in the social media and when you see more also females posting about like you especially brought it out like about cyber and what's happening there and again that you don't have to be nerd to be working in that sector yeah. do you think this would also be one of the you know kind of solutions in that sense yeah but, but I, i think it's important that in the c-level positions mm-hmm. we have uh, more women coming in mm-hmm. to take uh, their responsible uh, of the of That kind of companies, while we can see it as soon as there is a female who is leading a technical mm-hmm. company in Denmark, mm-hmm. there is a lot of females there too, mm-hmm. and there is a lot of youngsters coming there too. Mm-hmm. So there is also something to do uh, that that we need to uh, change the story as it has been. True. I'm going to take one of the questions, and uh, yes, we do have one here, and then I will. Uh, I will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we have already have a lot of hands, so so you can. Uh, yeah, you can start. Okay, the question I put a question in decided to. Okay. <laughs> so you mentioned the sea level. So in Rise in Sweden, we are currently cooperating with um, uh, education for board members. So I mean, we have the young people; it was fine, but it's the people with the money that are screwing up. Yeah. Um, and how do we educate the people? Do you have anything going on in Denmark to to educate people on boards about cybersecurity? Uh, One of the problems right now is that um, uh, in Denmark we have a, uh, towards the NIST 2 
all the boards has to be aware of that and is going to be a sea level and a board uh, matter for the future. The problem is right now that there is no, uh, that the Danish government can't tell the boards what they should be aware of. Of course, we had the, uh, the, uh, the 10 ind indicators that they should work with in the companies, but they can't give them any spe specific details. So there is no education. Of course, there's a lot of companies saying, come in and learn about the 10, but that's not enough. While they need to be specific towards each industry. And uh, we can't do that right now in Denmark. While it, uh, you know, it's each country who has to define how they will uh, work with the NIST2. So it's going to be the Danish government who is going to do their own law towards the NIST2. And they will, they will, I guess it will be in April next year. They will be ready six months before. So that's quite a problem in Denmark. Okay. We had one last question before we wrap it up and go for a lunch here. So uh, can we get the microphone for Michael in front of us? Well, yeah, the, it's coming. That's fine. It will be provocative. <laughs> I will try to kind of... Uh, so we discuss kind of uh, cyber education, uh, cyber education. Uh, on the other hand, I would ask uh, if we create these initiatives like Swedish, uh, Sweden proposed and you propose right now, so do we have a kind of analysis behind that, that what we need to do with an average person who actually is part of the cyber ecosystem, who's clicking the button, so basically they're kind of participating in the traffic, but obviously we expect in, in a way that they don't know the traffic rules. So we more or less train more traffic controllers and policemen and kind of uh, operators for that. And also kind of a, shouldn't we send a clear message to the ICT community because cyber in, at the end, in many cases, is a band-aid or kind of after effect uh, to kind of uh, basically fix the flaws in the in the bad IT. So I'm a bit worried that we are solving this problem, which is basically a symptomatic treatment in my mind. So what's your thoughts on that? But I do agree with you. And I think one of the, the ICT uh, areas and the... Uh, the areas we have in the, around the Nordic Baltic uh, companies have an obligation to do something about this. Uh, I think it's also important. I've, I like what you're doing in the, here towards the youngsters and the military. Uh, I think that's a way to do it. Uh, and I think it's a good way also if we could have in Denmark, we have discussed the same. We have a, a few, uh, a really few, I guess it's 30 or 40 uh, recruiters. Uh, who, who can have that part of the, the army, but we would like to, perhaps that could also be the, the way into the, while we, we would like more women to, to join the forces, but that per, could, perhaps, could perhaps be the way for the women into the forces, and then we can have them over to the industry afterwards. All right, um, then I will just wrap it up here. A very big thank you to you, uh, Pierre, for coming all the way from Denmark. Welcome.